Test one, test, hello, civilance. <laughs> cool, man. Check one, two, check. Check one, check one. We we played at Rock Cup the other day, and I was good at every game. Test one, two. Hey, Misty, can you hear me all right? Check one. Good evening, everybody. Loud and clear. How's the video footage? Is it still pixelated and frozen in time? This is cool, just working out the... Uh... Hey, Mel. How's the uh, footage? What's up, Joe? I'm doing a live broadcast. You're welcome to... <laughs> you can talk. <laughs> so, Mel, everything's coming through picture-wise and everything. It looks like there's a little lag on my end, but if it's coming through to you guys, then that's all good. I am broadcasting simultaneously on Facebook, so I don't know how that works as far as the chat goes. I guess maybe I can just pop in both platforms interesting cool this is cool that's good that's awesome excellent oh now I'm frozen great well <clears throat> welcome to the second fireside Billy chat um, so the first one was really grainy pixelated frozen so I had to come to a local coffee shop, which is where I hang out just about every day. And I'm hoping they have faster internet. Uh, there may be some people walking through and um, folks, you know, you, you might hear folks talking. But hey, maybe that'll add to the community feel. Um, maybe they can learn a little something about Billy, too. So, uh, you know, last time... I kind of talked about what I was doing and, and where I was at with everything and what I was currently researching, but I thought it'd be cool this time to kind of check in on what everyone else is into and, and what's on their mind about Billy and what they're looking into or reading about and what questions they have. And uh, Misty, is it your birthday? Man, I feel like Mel just had a birthday. Now it's Misty's birthday. Just happy birthday all around. That's awesome. We won't ask anyone how old they are. That's not cool. It's not nice to do. <laughs> so, um, last time I ended up talking about Brushy a whole lot. I was knee deep in uh, Morrison's letters and uh, Leon Metz papers and all of those archives. But <clears throat> I don't want to dwell on Brushy all the time. It kind of a it's kind of a temptation to in the Billy circles to always just talk about Brushy and to always keep those arguments going. Um, personally, I don't believe Brushy was Billy. You might. It's just one of those agree to disagree situations. Um, Misty, you can't start drinking at the start of the show. Or maybe, maybe you should. Maybe the more you drink, the better I sound. That's what we say when we play music. Um, so maybe that applies too. Uh, with Billy live videos. Maybe the drunker you get, the smarter I sound. <laughs> so, um, so what's everybody reading? Is, is anybody looking into anything Billy-wise? Uh, has anybody got any questions that's burning on their minds right now? Um, 
I've been back into trying to find Billy's parents and figure out his origins. I think for me that's always been the <clears throat> most motivating factor for me is I can't stand I think it comes from being a genealogist where I've I've done so much personal family genealogy, but I can't stand not having pieces of the puzzle and as so long as there are those empty spots that that keep the puzzle from being completed it drives me crazy so i've been spending a lot of time always have on trying to find billy's parents and so far there's still you know <clears throat> no solid leads um i find i feel like i find a little nugget here and that here and then uh, but you know nothing solid to go on yet and i hope that someday we do figure that out um, but I'm spending a lot of time right now searching records, uh, Indiana records, and trying to figure out, trace some sort of source there to kind of nail down any McCarty's that might be in that area, and then maybe work backwards from there to New York or forwards to Wichita. Um, but it's just... I think Frederick Nolan said in his introduction to the West of Billy the Kid that, you know, no other historical character has seemed to elude historians at every turn more than Billy the Kid. It's like he, his biography was designed to be evasive and to just miss this census and to just miss this record and to show up on the least amount of sources. And it, I tell you, it drives me crazy, um, and I'm sure it drives a lot of other folks crazy, too. But um, I'm just going to kind of give you guys a minute to, to throw in the chat what you're into, what you're researching right now. Hey, Kristen, um, unfortunately, I don't have my Billy bookshelf behind me because um, uh, Kristen uh, is a sensey a purveyor of Scentsy goods, and I got this Scentsy warmer from Kristen, and it it came with a, a weathered leather Scentsy wax bar, and um, I'm a huge, I love just good smelling stuff. I've spent hundreds on soap from monasteries and, you know, made out of goat's milk. I just love s stuff that smells good, and uh, I ordered a warmer from her that's kind of cool, has like some barbed wire wrapped around it, and uh a weathered leather uh, warmer uh, wax and it just smells amazing uh, so when I am in the Billy in the chasing Billy studio you can you'll be able to see that behind me but as it is I had to come to a coffee shop for live so I don't have that but if anybody in the Billy community wants to spruce up their library or office and get it smelling like an old cowboy on the range or anything else hit up Kristen um, Zach, uh, that section, Zach Hudnell asks, how long does it usually take for Cardigan Kid to uh, get naked? That's actually part of the um, paid member subscriptions, so you won't be seeing that on the free material. That's, um, that comes later. Uh, nope, nope, um, I'm not going to do it. Uh, <laughs> that was on the Facebook chat. I'm kind of bouncing between chats here. Uh, so if Mel and Misty, if you guys don't see those those chats, I'll be referring to. They're com probably coming from Facebook. Um, but um, I just finished a book today. I don't have it with me because I'm going to do a, a Billy short later this week about it. But it was, um, it was a really good book. It's called Chasing Billy the Kid. It's by Roy Young and Kurt House, I believe. And I got it. I picked it up in Lincoln. Uh, I went to Lincoln, New Mexico for old Lincoln days, and this book is just amazingly produced. It's a huge book. It's almost like a coffee table size book, um, so it's not just a standard paperback or hardback, and it's glossy pages, amazing photos, and kind of it, its spin is to focus on Frank Stewart, one of the posse members of Garrett's Posse. Well, I shouldn't say Garrett's Posse because the, the whole thing point of the book is to to really emphasize the part that Frank Stewart p played in the capture of Billy the Kid at Stinking Spring and one of the points of the book is that 
Pat Garrett has been kind of the shining figure in that whole incident, and Frank Stewart's role has been minimized. And so uh, what Roy Young and Kurt House do is explore the person of Frank Stewart, who came from Texas to New Mexico to help Pat track down Billy and talk about his life a little bit. But in addition to all that, it, it does, it digs into everything related to Billy's life, and it's well-researched, It's it has great sources, footnotes, um, there's a appendix in the back that has all the kind of like short bios of everybody involved. Uh, it, I, I'm not going to put a spin on it. It is a pricey book. It is one of the more pricey Billy books you can find, but it is worth it, in my opinion. It was an enjoyable read, and um, it's it became fast became one of my favorites. So I definitely recommend it. It it will kind of be something you might have to save up for. Um, or, you know, kind of set aside money every payday for it's It's kind of pricey, but it, it, it's worth it. And Roy Young and Kurt House did a great job. Uh, those guys were on site in Lincoln selling the book, and they were gracious enough to sign it for me. I got to meet them. They're nice fellows. And uh, I, I just grabbed it there, and I have an autographed copy, and it was fantastic. Um, so I'll be doing a little short video on that later on. Um, I was going to say something else uh, about that. I went to... Um, <laughs> Kristen, I'm not going to repeat Zach's question. I'm, I should probably shouldn't have even said it the first time. Um, but when I'm talking about Lincoln, uh, I, you know, I started researching Billy in maybe 2021 or 2022. So it's just been a few years. And... You know how it grabs us. It's like a, an obsession. It's like this almost, I say it's almost spiritual. It, it just something about it grabs you. And so I don't want to sound too, you know, uh, blasphemous or I don't want people to get the wrong idea of what I'm talking about. But in a certain sense to a historian or researcher caught up in this is we kind of see Lincoln as like the Holy Land. You know, it's like we to go there is the ultimate um you know, trip that we can make. And uh, fortunately, I was able to go for old Lincoln days uh, last July, I think. Maybe it was August. I can't even remember when old Lincoln days was. But um, I drove, I rented a car. I live in West Virginia, and I drove from West Virginia to New Mexico, traveled through, you know, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, um, and I rode into New Mexico with uh, Josh Slatton, one of the executive directors for the coalition, and another board member, Mike, Mike Morrison. And we, we were in a pickup, and we drove from Amarillo, Texas, to Lincoln. And, <laughs> hey, Navy dogs, that's a shame. We'd love to have you. Um, but so, so we take this pickup truck from Amarillo to, to Lincoln, and... The minute I crossed into New Mexico, I mean, I don't in any way want to sound like a new ager, you know, too too much with my head in the clouds, but like you can almost feel it. There's something magical about New Mexico and the the horizon changes, everything it, it just it was uh semi spiritual for me just crossing into New Mexico. And then hey Paul and then, uh, so we we approach Lincoln, you know, and, and Josh and Mike are like, hey, we're getting ready to head in. And it's nighttime, completely dark. I forget the time, but it was probably maybe somewhere around 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. And we pull into Lincoln, we have our windows down, and it is just silent. And we're, we're going real slow. Luckily, it's nighttime. Nobody else is around. We don't have to get, you know, out of the road. We can just kind of slowly coast through Lincoln and... Josh is, is pointing out the various buildings and everything, and we pull up to about where the courthouse is, and we get out, and there's not a soul to be seen anywhere, and it's completely dark, and the courthouse is there just looming, and we get out, and we stand, I stand in the middle of the road, and I'm looking, you know, at the sky and, and the, all the buildings around, 
and we walk up to the courthouse and, and stand in the spot where Bob Ollinger stood and look up at that window and pictures just, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of pictures of, of that window and the, the spot where Bob stood and, and everything, but just no pictures do it justice when you stand there and see how close it was that Bob would have looked up to have seen Billy and it, just the, the combination of it being nighttime and silent and not crowded and just being there in the flesh the first time, I was just so magical. I'm telling you, even it, it even smelled good in Lincoln. It was so weird. There was this like, uh, I don't maybe maybe it's just the trees or something, but there was this pine floral scent. I, I'm telling you, it was, I hate to sound too new age weirdo about it, but it was really magical. And I hope everybody gets to experience it in their own way. And, um, and then the next day, you know, we start, we commence at old Lincoln days and, uh, it was just a fantastic time to be able to walk the street of Lincoln, the street of Lincoln, and <laughs> to, to see all these sites that you've read about so long and that you've watched the movies, um, you know, portray and, but to actually be there and to walk the floorboards of the Tunstall store and all these places that you knew to, to go upstairs in the courthouse and to, to look out the same window that Billy fired a, a gun out of. It's just, it is, uh, it's a lot like time travel. And, um, I, I, I have to say, yeah, Misty, you're right. It's like our Nirvana. It's, uh, but I prefer Pearl Jam. Um, but it's, it's magical, and and if anybody has an interest in history in this facet of history, it's it's truly a spiritual experience. But um, I'm just getting caught up on the chat here. Um, yeah, absolutely, Paul. I'm glad you know what I'm talking about. Um, Paul Ruddick says what you're describing is the exact feeling I felt or that I had when I went there. And, it, man, it's just so true. There's something magical about that place, and I don't know what it is. And maybe the folks back then felt it too. Um, we, uh, I stayed with Steve Cedarwall at his uh, home, and uh, Steve and his wife Carolyn are great people, and we had a blast outside of the official Lincoln days. We just had a great time uh, with them and the Coalition Boys and uh, Amy, and it was just had a you know we had a great time. Um, and immediately after I left, you know, just not even home yet just by the time I about hit Texas I'm about re ready to go back um, I, it's so odd because Lincoln is a small town it's it, Lincoln is is one street and you leave and you're like I just want to go back something magical about that area um, but yeah I hope uh, we all get to experience it I hope everybody's able to visit Lincoln it was uh, truly amazing but yeah, Kristen says the vibes, land of enchantment. I mean, it, it is. It's awesome. Um, it's something I'll never forget, and I'm very thankful I was able to do it. And I <clears throat> got a chihuahua out of it. <laughs> I drove back across the country with a chihuahua on my shoulder or on my lap. And uh, she was a great, a great dog all the way back. But... Um, yeah, Winky, I've never, I didn't get to go to San Patricio or, uh, you know, believe it or not, we didn't have time for me to go to Fort Sumner either. So there's a reason to go back because I did not get to visit Billy's grave. And that's probably something I want to do, something I have to do. So, hey, you all, you can come on. <laughs> so that's uh, that's just something I really hate that we didn't have time to do that, but I got to see so much. We, in addition to Lincoln, uh, Fort Stanton was amazing. I we pulled in, and I didn't know where we were. I just you know saw these buildings, and I was like, "What's this place?" And they're like Fort Stanton, and I was like, "Oh, this is Fort Stanton. It looks nothing like what I imagined. I thought it was, I thought it would be in the middle of a like a barren desert, all browns and just sweltering heat, and and just." you know, the same tans everywhere and browns of the desert. And, like, there's actually a lot of green, you know. There's a lot of grass and big trees. And it's 
it, maybe it was the weather that day, but it was just very nice. Fort Stanton was a beautiful place. I uh, walked through the buildings there, and then we uh, we went to the site of the Great House Ranch, which is where uh, Jim Carlisle is still buried, and we visited the headstone that the coalition had put up uh, for him, and to see where the Great House, to see where that ranch was, that tavern, really cool experience, and it's right off of what used to be the old wagon road, and looking up and down the the long field you could actually still see where that road used to be you know the once well-traveled road you know that's how billy would have gotten there and all the other people and now it's just a part of the field it's just grass that's just looks a little bit different than the grass around it where you can tell it was a road and it, it's just crazy how how time changes things and there's hardly a trace of the great house ranch I mean, you, basically nothing, and um, but it's it's somehow still magical to see, and <clears throat> so we didn't get to get we didn't get to go to San Pat, we didn't get to go to Fort Sumner, we were gonna go to White Oaks, um, but we didn't have time. It had gotten too late in the day for us. Uh, Paul Ruddick says when you're in Sumner visiting the grave, check out Pete Maxwell's grave and the stones around it. Um, yeah, Paul, it's a, it's a really cool-looking grave. I've seen pictures of it, but, you know, I'll check that out when I get there. And I don't know how far of a walk it is from um, Billy's grave to actually where he was shot, but um, I'll have to check that out, too. Um, Winky said, were you able to go to San Elizario? Uh, no, and um, interesting thing about San Elizario is... Personally, I, I don't really believe that that event took place. Um, I've searched and searched, and I've, I've never been able to establish that uh, a man named Mel Segura even existed, um, much less was imprisoned in San Elizario to be rescued by Billy. It, it seems to me that if that had happened, you know, Billy chases, you know, makes this dashing ride to San Elizario uh, impersonates a U.S. Marshal, breaks his buddy out, and they take off to uh, Mexico. It seems to me that there would be mention of it anywhere, and there's just not. So what I'm wondering is, is, is this event totally apocryphal? Did it not happen? Was it made up? You know, was the whole character of, was the whole character of Mel Segura made up? Um, possibly. You know, Ash made up a lot of other stuff, but uh, I'm I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it happening. And hopefully, it'd be really awesome if someone found documented evidence of Mel Segura and that whole event taking place. Um, it would be cool. It's a cool story, and as are all the other adventures that Billy had with Mel. Um, it makes for good storytelling, and it'd be awesome if it happened. My current position is that I don't think it happened at all. Uh, which is ironic because they have a statue for it. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's a landmark. It, people passing through that area can see it and think, oh, cool, hey, something happened here. And I, I understand it's the same reason, you know, there's a Billy Museum in Heiko. It's just, I don't know if it really happened. So, um, yeah, maybe that's something to research. Maybe that's something we can look into. Um Oh, okay, Roland. That yeah. So, I didn't even know there was a marker, a, high, a highway marker for the Great House Ranch. Um, I think you know it being on private property, it, it was something I think that we, uh, Josh Slatten actually had uh, arranged with the owners to to check out. So it's very fortunate we were able to do that. Maybe next year, Roland, uh, if you're able to make it out, we can sync up and and. We'll go out to some of these places. We did see the the Salazar house, the old rock house that belonged to uh, Salazar where Billy fled to get his shackles off. And I don't know if he got his shackles off there. There's some conflicting accounts. Um, but it is said that he fled there after escaping the courthouse. And um, all that's left now, it, it was extremely hard to find <laughs> 
we we drove around in side by sides on this ranch for a long time looking for it. Um, it was near two ponds, and um, of course no water was in them. But uh, it it's just amazing how much is still there of that rock house. It it's got all the all the walls basically. Some are kind of crumbled in and by fallen trees and everything, but. The, it was amazing to see such an old structure untouched and still standing. And it, there's a ton of overgrowth um, that I feel like if you were able to dig out and kind of do some digging there, you would find a lot of, you know, home artifacts and uh, cans and cooking ware and who knows what else. Um, I do have pics, Paul, and uh, they're on my personal profile, but after this live, I will also throw them up on the Chasing Billy Facebook, and if I'm able to put them on the community page here on YouTube, I'm not, uh, last I checked, I didn't have enough subscribers and stuff to do that yet, there's some kind of limitation, but um, I will definitely do that if it lets me, but at any rate, it, also, I could email them to you as well, um, my email address is james.townsend at btkcoalition.com. Just shoot me an email, and uh, I'll send you all the pictures I took. So um, what's going on with everybody else? I feel like all I've talked about is, you know, my trip and what I'm reading and what I'm researching. Um, is anybody reading anything cool? Anybody watching anything cool? The new season of Billy the Kid's coming up, season two. Wasn't a huge fan of the first one. Um, we have a few videos where Josh Slatton and Jeremiah and myself are discussing uh, season one. They are obviously way bigger fans of the show than me, but I, you know, I like it. It's fine. It's just it doesn't grab me. It, it's it's no, you know, Young Guns or Old Henry or The Kid. I love those movies, and this show just hasn't done it for me. Uh, it's not that I'm opposed to it, and I'm super excited to see season two. And I'll definitely keep watching, but uh, it, I hope they ramp it up, in my opinion. It's just not doing it for me. Um, and then there's this new movie coming out, apparently, with another guy uh, cast as Billy the Kid. So Billy's getting some traction right now. And, you know, whether good or bad, whether I like the show, whether I like a, a movie or, or anything that, put, that comes out, I'm all about Billy getting traction because it keeps the conversation going and it keeps new folks coming in and finding things, you know, fresh eyes, fresh ears coming to, to research this stuff and to bring new perspectives, and it, it's awesome. Yeah, uh, Winky says, I'm re-watching Billy the Kid first season. Now that I've read five or so books, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say his last name, Winky. Barry Kagan? Uh, um, I do hope the new movie happens, Mel. It's a amazing um, I think the guy they cast as Billy looks awesome and I, I don't mind Tom Blythe either but I think this this Barry guy he, he really just the picture his little headshot looks amazing um, but yeah so and, and then uh, my friend Joy shared a trailer with me f of this movie it looks honestly I mean very historically inaccurate but it's called um, Killing Billy the Kid I think and it's about Pat chasing Billy. And I don't know where it's available. I looked on Netflix. It's not on there yet. But it says it was made in 2023. So that's something else i got to track down. I love all this new Billy stuff coming out. What I'm worried about is, is someone's going to do a bad job of it. Like this show, if season two is terrible or, or anything like that, and it gets canceled, then anytime someone in the near future wants to do something Billy-related, producers and studios and such will say it's already been done it's it's too soon after that other show bombed so i'm worried you know about oversaturation or or bad storytelling wrecking any other new creative endeavors but um heck we can always just write books write fiction things like that um oh that's great winky i didn't i've never seen him any anything but it's good to know that billy has been a hero to him since he was a kid this barry kagan uh person i feel like it's like a Gaelic Irish name and that it probably sounds nothing like it looks so I just feel like there's no way but for me to butcher the name um, 
But yeah, you know, Tom Blythe said that he he loved Billy too, and had read a lot about him. So, um, that's not panning out well for the story. But I think that's the way they're writing, and I just think they're in the Billy the Kid show. They're writing this <clears throat> very somber, sad Billy who's always like in a serious mood. I just haven't seen the the trickster archetype. I haven't seen that sneak, sneaky prankster type charismatic Billy that everyone would remember in the show. Just kind of like this emo guy walking around and occasionally gambling and sleeping with someone. And it's like, nobody would remember this guy. I mean, he has almost no personality and he just walks around and practices his gun. But like everybody who offered their recollections of Billy all never failed to mention his char charisma, his personality, his jokes, his humor, and I'm, I just see none of that in the show. Maybe they'll ramp it up. Maybe they'll evolve that. Um, but if not, and that's the way they want to write him, that's fine too, I guess. It's just not grabbing me. You know, it doesn't mean it's not good TV. <clears throat> um, Winky says Oscar nominated for that Irish movie. Yeah, well, if maybe he's a decent enough actor to take on the part then. Um Aaron Presley says that I'd really, I wish they'd stick to the facts. The true story is so interesting. Yeah, Aaron, I felt like that a lot seeing the first season. And I agree with you. I, I think there's so many parts of the Billy story that are just amazing the way that they really happened. And you see somebody rewrite something for the TV show or a movie and, and the way that they've rewritten it is actually less interesting than the way it happened, and I have no idea why they even chose to do that. I think, and, and you know, there's there's another thing. In the in the show, in season one, it, <laughs> I think, and I could be wrong, I've only seen it once, this part, but they mention Lawrence Murphy. When they first mention uh, Murphy, they say there's a guy in Lincoln who does all this business. His name is Lawrence P. Murphy. And I'm like, what? Why did you change the initial of his middle name? Like, what kind of, like, what kind of writing are you doing? What kind of, like, thinking and creative brainstorming is happening in the back rooms when you're writing this to where you're like, his name's Lawrence G. Murphy, but I really think it should be Lawrence P. Murphy. Like, what, what motivated you to make that decision? It, there's no need to change it. It does nothing for any story. It does nothing for any... Uh, evolution of character, I can't figure it out. It's so weird. And there's so many changes like that in the show. It just kept throwing me, you know? I'm a huge fan of Young Guns and Young Guns 2. I love the movie The Kid. I love Old Henry. I believe Billy the Kid died in 1881 at Fort Sumner, and I'm a huge fan of Old Henry. But, so it's not historical inaccuracies that puzzle and frustrate me. It's weirdly stupid creative choices that these people make that it's like why did you even waste the creative energy to change his middle initial it makes no sense to me what's up dos boot how's it going man You're a little late to the party but we're still kicking misty's drank probably all she should drink but everybody else is going good yeah old henry's fantastic um yeah i mean when I first watched Old Henry, um, and when when Henry, you know, buckles his guns together and, and puts his hat on and gets ready to just go into beast mode, it's like I got chills, man. I love that movie. Um, bought it the first time, first chance I got. And uh, I watched it a few times since. Yeah, Misty, I don't know. Uh, I think the G stands for Gustav. Um, and I tell you, there better be... Uh, Misty asked what the P stands for in Lawrence P. Murphy in the show. There better be some critical plot point or some turn of events that just hinges on that middle initial being P for me to understand why the writers chose to change a middle initial. I don't know why, but that just makes me so frustratingly angry <laughs> that they even did that. And I'll have to go back and watch. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just misheard it. But, like, it just... It's inexplicable, and it drives me nuts that there's just no reason you would do that. And I just want to call up Michael Hurst 
and say like, "Why, man? Why? Why this? Why did you change this? I can handle just about everything else, but this changing a middle initial just seems so dumb to me." But maybe that's why I'm not getting paid to write Hollywood shows, and he is. I mean, that guy did Vikings, and that was pretty fun. What I saw of it, yeah. Winky says no real research, and that's what. Uh, that's another thing that mystified me was early on before the show came out, you know, the producer and the writer, Michael Hurst, were making the rounds on podcasts and, you know, entertainment TV shows and stuff, giving their interviews on hyping up the show. And Michael Hurst on one of these, and it was a video, so I couldn't go back and find it in an article, and I would love to have the video source, but unfortunately I don't. Um... But he said in this video, he was like, I think this is the most researched Billy the Kid story you'll ever see. And so I, I was like, okay, you know, we'll hold you to that. And then the show came out and it was like, you just researched Pat Garrett's book, didn't you? Because that's basically the only thing you're following here. And it, it was gravely disappointing, you know. And we talk about this um, – I think we have three videos out now where we analyze each episode, myself along with the Slatten brothers. And, you know, so I won't dig into it too much here, but it's like, you know, it to, you choose Coffeeville, Coffeeville, you, you, you take William Bonnie or Patrick Bonnie as you've dubbed Billy's father, and you, you take him to Coffeeville and you have him die in there. And it's like, that was the standard narrative before any real research ever started. And there's nothing about Wichita, and it just, I don't know why they, they chose to do it. It doesn't ruin the show, but it's just like, again, I don't understand it. It's mystifying. Um, Misty said, I'm only on my third bottle of wine. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what's the Tom Folliard rumors? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Um, yeah, Tom Blythe, maybe, I don't know, but... Uh, we don't, I wish we had more pictures of Tom Folliard. And there's kind of two streams in the research community, but as far as I can tell, it's been established that Tom's middle initial was O, and it was Tom O, and then his last name was Folliard. Just starts with an F, Folliard. And that kind of got transposed to Tom O. Folliard, uh, like it was an Irish name with an O and then the apostrophe, but that that is not correct. Uh, and, and even a lot of his contemporaries referred to him as O'Folliard. And heck, he, he may have even done that as a comical, you know, thing. Like, my name is Tom O'Folliard, but I'll just go as Tom O'Folliard. Who knows? Maybe stranger things have happened in history, but um, I do think his last name was Folliard. And um, he was actually... Uh, just read a book. Um, yeah, Rollin, it did. Um, he, Folliard's parents, uh, went to Mexico, and I don't recall offhand whether he was born in Texas or Mexico, but, uh, one or both of his parents died in Mexico, and he went back to live with an, an aunt and uncle. And he was actually, uh, Tom McKenney's, uh, cousin. So McKenney, who was there with Poe on the night of July 14th, and, and, you know, as Tom lay dying in Fort Sumner, he was in the same room as, as his cousin, McKinney. And that's a shame. I mean, uh, it's a shame that, that McKinney didn't do more to help. Uh, I think there's a book. Uh, no, never mind. It's something Brushy said, so I'll, I'll leave that out. <laughs> but, um, you know, Tom's always fascinated me. They say he was a big dude. He seemed to be loyal to Billy. He was there for the... The Lincoln County War, he was there at the burning of the McSween house. Um, and, and there's a cool story about Tom. I don't know if it's it's true or not, but they said, you know, one of his companions fell as they were all fleeing McSween's burning house. And, you know, amid all of the gunshots and the fighting, Tom just calmly bent down and, and helped pick him up and get him out of there. And the way it's told is a really cool story. But... Um, he, he's just always fascinated me because he's not one of the most visible characters of the whole narrative, and he doesn't show up a lot, but he seems to be, when, when he does show up, he seems like he was one of the most 
steadfast and present people there. It's just kind of, for whatever reason, historical documentation and recollections has shrouded him or, or kind of glossed him over. But I would love love it if we found more info about him. We have one picture of him, and uh, it would be real cool if we found more pictures of him, stuff like that. But again, this late in the game, it's really hard to find any kind of pictures with Providence. Uh, so that's another thing. I say Providence. A lot of people say Provenance, Provenance. Um, I've always just said Providence, and I just don't have the energy to change that. Um, but I would like to know more about Tom Folliard. I'd like to know more about Tom Pickett. You know, Tom Pickett went on to live the rest of his life um, in Arizona and never said anything about riding with Billy or anything like that. I find that completely just fascinating. Uh, it'd be nice to know or nice to find something where he did. Um, yeah, Robin, it, that's what I was thinking, too, that it, it could have been Harvey Morris. Um, but I can't, I can't remember for sure. And uh, so, I, you know, maybe we can look it up uh, once we get off here. But, yeah, Roland, uh, Steve's Cedarwall's research on Folliard and a lot of other stuff is really, you know, I really enjoyed his book. It was one of the first books I read when I got into this. And um, it was like really examining some things with some fresh eyes and new angles, and it, it just blew me away. I really enjoyed that book. Um, I'm not sure that I, you know, one of his contentions is that Brady was on a horse when he was shot, and um, I don't really necessarily agree with that, <clears throat> but he could have been, and, uh, you know, that's just <clears throat> one more thing to research, but... Um, I don't think he was on a horse, but other than that, I think a lot of the other stuff was just a, an amazing analysis. <clears throat> and Steve, don't go getting mad because I, I disputed the horse idea. You know, you, um, it's just we'll agree to disagree. Um, don't don't come trying to start no fights with me. You know, with this hat, I'll win. Um, but uh, uh, they weren't on horses. Yeah, Doss, I, I tend to agree with you. you. You can back me up when Steve comes gunning for us. Um, yeah, Paul, that's one of my favorite things that happened is when Folliard, you know, is sitting there, you know, coughing up his own blood probably and dying, and he knows he's dying, and he takes the time to call Pat, you long-legged son of a bitch. <laughs> it's it's a shame. That whole scene is kind of sad to think about, you know. They all sit around and play poker while he's dying, and uh, gosh, I hate that. What do you guys think about Pat's recollection yeah, I mean, Mel, they could have. And, and one of Steve's points, Mel says, I think they could have been on horses. And one of Steve's points is that it says when Brady was shot, he, he fell down into a seated position. And Steve maintained that if he, you know, is shot off of his horse and the horse bucks or something like that, then that's the natural position it would land you in. Who knows? It's a pretty cool thing. Maybe we can get Steve on here to talk about it sometime. That'd be fun. Um, I... That, that derailed what I was thinking about. I was talking about Folliard. Um, huh. It's just a shame. You know, they were they all just sat around playing poker uh, while he died. And, oh, I was going to ask you guys what you thought that, <clears throat> what do you thought about Pat's recollection? Because the way Pat tells the story is as they were waiting in the old hospital building where uh, Charlie and Manuela sometimes stayed, Billy and Tom Pickett and Rudabaugh and Billy Wilson and Tom Folliard were approaching in the snow. And later on, when Pat captured Billy, they were talking about it. And Billy said, you know, Pat, I thought something was up. And so I kind of felt something was going to happen. And I was in the front. So I kind of just let my horse trail back and uh, asked whoever was in the back for some tobacco and kind of winked at Pat like, the reason you didn't get me was because I sensed it and kind of shifted back, and you got Tom instead. What troubles me about that little anecdote is that it shows a Billy who didn't really care much about his friends, <clears throat> and he was more pleased at getting out of the situation himself, and that if he sensed an ambush or if he sensed that something was wrong, instead of saying, guys, hold up, let's let's turn this way, or let's let's kind of slow our approach. Instead, he kind of just moves himself back <clears throat> and doesn't worry about his pals. 
And of course, that goes against our our narrative of who we want Billy to be, right? Do we, you know, Billy is a guy who cares about his pals. He's a guy who would watch your back. And, and frankly, that's a, what a lot of the recollections say about him, too. And it's why I'm hesitant to believe that story that Pat told. But then it doesn't really change much in terms of making Pat look good or bad. Good or bad. So why, why would Pat tell it if it didn't happen? And it's kind of like those are the questions we have to ask. And, you know, are, are we pushing certain stories away because we don't like the way it fits our you know, visions of who Billy should have been or are we pushing that away and defining that as an anecdote because it's contradictory to a lot of other trustworthy sources and recollections and that's the trouble. Um, and yeah, I mean, Robin, I'm glad you said that, that, that you've always been torn about that. Robin Kaiser says, I've always been torn about that. It doesn't seem like something Billy would do, but why would Pat make it up? Was it an Ash story? Yeah, Doss says, yeah, Doss quotes it. I went back for the tobacco, don't you see? Um, and and Winky's right. In that newspaper article, he said, I was never part of a gang. I was for Billy all the time. So, and, and CS says, I personally take anything Pat said with a grain of salt, which is also a very good approach because uh, you just can't trust some of the things that, that Pat said. Um and this might be one of them. I would hate it if it was true. It, it's kind of you know a bad a bad mark on on Billy or how we see Billy. But um, maybe it did happen. <clears throat> uh, Massimo, uh, you'll have to tell me how to pronounce your name, man. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Uh, and forgive me if I do. Uh, but is it Massimo or Massimo? Uh, you're a great researcher, man, and uh, it's a privilege to read your finds and your posts, and uh, you've uh, you've helped me and others on on some things we're working on in the past, and it's just a a joy to to interact with you in the community. I appreciate you. Uh, he says, James, do you think that it's realistic to assume that there were two saloons in Fort Sumner in 1880? Many authors say so because Garrett claimed that Billy killed Grant in Hargrove Saloon. By way of contrast. Paulita Maxwell claimed it was in Jose Silva's saloon in June 15, 1880. Jose Silva was living with his mother, Petra and Beaver Smith, in Fort Sumner. He married ten days later, and a witness was Jesus Silva. That's an interesting question, and the truth is I've always just assumed that there were two saloons. Um, and I really don't want to give an answer because I don't... I don't know the answer, and I don't really even have an inclination one way or the other. I think Josh Slatton would be able to provide some insight into this, or, or Doss on the chat. Um, they may have read more about it than me, but uh, I just always had assumed there were two saloons. And <clears throat> there's a letter from Paco Naya who said that it was claimed that Jesus Silva ran a saloon or a restaurant, but that he really didn't. So do we know for sure that Jesus Silva ran a restaurant or saloon. Um, and one thing, it, me and Josh have done some research on Beaver, and uh, I can't wait to to show you guys what we found. Uh, Josh is going to write an article up on that. And uh, it's just it's some really cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there were two saloons or not. I always just assumed there were. So that's something we can look into. Um, also like to take a minute. <clears throat> we're hitting maybe like, I don't know what, 45 minutes or so. I want to uh, thank everyone. You know, I, I was thanking Massimo for, for being such a part of the group, but I just, I love this community. Um, Mel, Misty, Rollin, uh, Doss, the Coalition Boys. It, it You know, I love the coalition I'm a part of. I love the group I'm a part of. Uh, Life and Legend of Billy the Kid. We, we've hit, we've crossed the threshold of 30,000 members in this Facebook group, and it's it's just people coming to, to check in on, on what's going on with Billy the Kid and, and to learn more about him, and I think that's pretty amazing that this, this young kid from around the 1880s brings so many people still, but 
me and my buddy Rob were, Rob is from Sweden, and uh, he's one of my first pals I made in the Billy community, and uh, he's still a, a beacon of Billy dedication and, and wonder. Uh, but we started that group, and it was just two of us. And what had happened was there was some kind of issue in the Billy the Kid group run by another dude, and uh, Rob and I were talking, and I was just like, Rob, I'm just, let's just make our own. So we made Life and Legend, and it was two people. And then it just seemed like for months and months, nobody, it was just us two, and nothing happened in it, and we kind of just forgot about it. And all of a sudden, it just started kicking up, and now we're at 30,000 people, and me and Rob and Mel uh, are the admins, and uh, it's just a fun community. I've always said that, you know, it's more like a saloon. We pretty much allow anything. You know, there, there are some groups who focus strictly on academic research and uh, truth and facts, and, and we love all those things. But in the group, we want to just be, we want to celebrate everything, the life and the legend of Billy the Kid. So we, uh, aside from, you know, personal, personal insults and threats and things like that, we just have a good time and, and talk about it all. And uh, it's really cool. Mel, Mel is in the chat right now. Yeah, we, Mel says we let in scum. <laughs> We're not the White Oaks of the Facebook community. But um, Mel is in the chat right now. I think, Mel, it would be cool if me and you and Robert got on and did a show one time and, and just talked about all kinds of stuff. That would be really cool. I would love to <coughs> have the three of us do a video and just talk about the group and, and the things in the group. Um yeah, uh, Doss Boot says Paco is the first-hand account for the death of Joe Grant. Paco says Bob Johnson's saloon, which I'd assume means Bob Hargrove. Um, yeah, so I mean, I always just assumed there were two saloons, but that's the danger we all face and kind of keep each other accountable for because there, there are a lot of things that we set out to find with documentation and to make sure we have an objective eye, but then there are so many things that we just don't even know that we presume that we you know should maybe question and there's so many things that we set out and just have presuppositions that are true that aren't and that's kind of why it's good to have these communities so that we can kind of like keep each other in check and hold each other to some semblance of uh semi-academic standards not that we're <laughs> Not that a lot of us aren't in any academic capacity, but uh, we do have research standards and, you know, adherence to some facts and things like that. At least I would hope so. Sometimes you don't see that. But, um, but yes, scum is definitely allowed in the life and legend. I always like to say that life and legend of Billy the Kid is the, the slums of the Billy community. You know, we just let it all in. Uh, if you want, you know more rigid parameters for what you can discuss and post. There are definitely groups for that, but we just like to have a good time in Life and Legend. Um, Misty says, some of my favorite people are scum. Yep, that's right. And uh, that's what I love about this. And hopefully, you know, as, as we do more shows and do more live shows, we can get more folks on board and, and grow this community because I look forward to it, it you know. I look forward to jumping on the chat and seeing all you folks again. And um, it's kind of cool how folks from all over the world kind of become a staple of your your week, your day, you know, and uh, that you're able to connect with all these folks from around the world over this little niche aspect of history. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a good time, and it would be cool if uh, internet allowed it or if you know, I ever get fast internet at home, it would be super cool to have folks on the video, too, to have, you know, multiple panels of folks so some of you guys could, like, video up and uh, discuss things with me in real time on, on video as well. Uh, I don't know how feasible that is in terms of lag and latency. That's why I do a lot of pre-recorded videos because it's, it's better quality, it's... There, there's not a lot of loss of connection and things like that, but at the same time, you sacrifice real-time discussion and chats and, and for, for lack of a better word, fellowship with people. But um, 
but yeah, that's why we do both, right? We do live on Wednesday and then release whatever videos we can uh, as it comes out. Uh, one thing I've really, really enjoyed doing are those little short videos of quotes that I come across that really strike me and then kind of just add in some music and, and photos. And uh, hopefully that's a good way of getting good Billy information out in 60 seconds or less to kind of spark people's interests, you know. But, uh, yeah, international scum. We should we should have patches that say that, you know, a picture of Billy with a... Uh, the logo international scum that's pretty good i like that hey mel put that down for the we got to tell rob that that's going in the life and legends store <laughs> and we'll give misty a cut but uh yeah winky we're billy fans and and that's the that's the driving force and i don't know what it is it will always mystify me that one you know 21 year old or 20 year old or however old he was one kid in new mexico in 1880 1881 is still talked about and still holds this spell over people um in a way that in my opinion nobody else does in this area of history i mean i know people like wyatt earp and people like doc holiday and, and i do too i like all i love the american west i love the western history but nothing grabs people the way that Billy seems to grab people. And maybe someday we'll be able to articulate what that is. Maybe there's some kind of weird psychic, spiritual reason, you know, uh, who knows. But I'm just fascinated and thankful to be caught up in all of it myself because it's been magical and I've met the best people through it. Um, so I can always just be thankful for that. Got to go out to New Mexico see the the flat land and the the mountains and the see lincoln it's just it's been an amazing ride and uh that's really made everything worth it and justified all of the the hours i've spent reading about this stuff and looking over newspapers and writing articles and blogs and uh josh we're about to wrap it up man and you just decide you're gonna pimp right in and and you know strut your stuff <laughs> Josh was uh, otherwise engaged this evening, so he's jumping on uh, as he's available. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I think we had a good time. We're clocking in here at uh, 57 minutes, so I think I've used enough of this coffee shop's data. I uh, appreciate you guys putting up with people walking through and background noise and all that, but um, if it was better quality and if it, you know, if everything was broadcast better here it's something i can do uh if not i can just pixelate at home it's it's up to you guys and your feedback but i don't mind coming out here and doing it here and so long as there was no lag or or bad feed here so um yeah josh misty says josh is out keeping the scum off the streets that's right there those are national scum misty we're international scum Cool, Winky. Good to hear. I'm glad it was it was good. Um, and and if you have any feedback about how to do this this open forum kind of chat Billy thing, I just like to get on here once a week and have no agenda, no outline, and just riff on on Billy stuff. I think it's cool. The, you never know where it's gonna go. You don't know what kind of subjects or questions are gonna come up. Um, but if you guys have ideas or things you'd like to discuss or certain points you'd like made or or anything you know message me through the week on facebook or or my email and um and send me some stuff i'll compile a list and we'll talk about stuff but other than that i don't mind just jumping on and and seeing where y'all are at and and talking about billy and usually we don't have any problem filling an hour seems like we could go for four hours sometimes um yeah yeah, I'll, I'll show some pictures I have. That's really cool. Um, and then uh, you guys do the same. I think Paul, was it Paul that that just went to Lincoln? Maybe he can share some of his pictures. Um, cool, Aaron. I'm glad, man. Uh, I'm glad Aaron Aaron Presley said he really enjoyed this. Uh, sometimes it's good just to just to sit down and talk about this stuff naturally without a script because you know when you have a script or an outline, you you try to it becomes more about running a show and keeping within the bounds of, of what you've
planned or written down. And sometimes it's just good to sit and just shoot the shit about Billy. Um, because that's, that's where a lot of the magic happens and where you get some good ideas. And, and I don't even know. I don't know why we do what we do. But for some reason, here we are able to talk, you know, a mile a minute about this kid. But it's cool. Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, another successful Wednesday night in the bag. And we'll see you throughout the week. But uh, we will definitely see you live again next Wednesday for our fireside or coffee side chat. And uh, I appreciate you all sticking around. I'm going to try to end it now which was probably going to result in me staring at the camera on live video for five minutes, waiting for it to stop awkwardly with no background music or anything, just me and you.